Welcome everyone to 55 and 5 presented by Basan Creative. I'm Ian Riccoboni. Got our guest of honor, Carrie Silken. I'm back. You're back. You came back after the raucous episode one featuring Vern Gagne. <laughs> It was fun. Now, I hope you have something a little more challenging for me this time. Well, for those who are joining us for the first time, we're going through the 1955 Parkhurst set. It's a set that Carrie, Carrie and I have enjoyed putting together during the quarantine. It's a set that came out primarily in Ontario, primarily in upstate New York, Buffalo and Vermont. Yeah, it's it's a really fun set. And it features a lot of the Hall of Famers of wrestling, some of the more notable names and some of the less notable names. Now, in a quest to really understand what I have, I've enlisted the help of historian Carrie Silken to help me walk through some of these names and learn about some of the big names and some of the small names, too. And by the way, a nice way to say a historian is another way to say, I got an old guy. <laughs> 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 well, you can, for more stories with Carrie and myself, you can check out Last Stop Penn Station, where Carrie regales us with some old time wrestling. Some adult film stories and all kinds of fun stuff. So, And we talk about Captain Lou and Uncle Gunny, who will be our guests here every week as well. So, Carrie, today, last time we talked about Vern Gagne. And today, you'll have five minutes. And we do this on our phone because Carrie and I both tend to talk a lot. Uh, we limit it to five minutes. And today, you'll have someone a little less notable. He was a giant, a physical giant in the world of professional wrestling. So I'm going to share this with our camera here first, our audience here. And these cards are beautiful. Um, this is kind of a painted shot of a man with a cowboy hat. Uh, he is standing in front of what appears to be a bank. <laughs> I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> Some of these cards are wild. They're beautiful. Uh, I thought it was the Alamo, but it clearly is not. Not upon second investigation. This man, his name is Tex McKenzie. So, Carrie... I'm going to hold Tex in my left hand. I have Carrie's safety net in the left in case we stump Carrie, which I don't think we will, but we might. And I'm going to set the timer right now at five minutes. And Carrie, your five minutes to tell us about Tex McKenzie starts now. Well, it's my experience about Tex McKenzie. So this card is from 1955. Mm -hmm. And I was started buying the wrestling magazines quickly after discovering pro wrestling. So we're talking about 1967, 68. And I would gobble up running around Cranford to C.C. Harris <laughs> and old lady Morgan Roth and every magazine store I could get. So I knew the name Tex McKenzie. Mm -hmm. And they portrayed him as a, a, a cowboy, a big man. Well, if you want to see Tex, I finally got to see Tex McKenzie. Really? There was a company... And you're going to, I think you're going to know this, Eddie Einhorn. The IWA? Yes. Okay. Eddie Einhorn was the owner of the White Sox. Yes. And in 1974, five-ish, he tried to go national. With Pedro Morales. Or excuse me, Pedro, Pedro Martinez. Martinez. Excuse yes. me, thank you. Yeah. And suddenly on New York Channel 9, WOR, mm -hmm. which still exists, uh, at midnight on Sundays... He bought time and he had a show. And that's when I saw 20 years later from this card, <laughs> from 1955. I saw Tex McKenzie. Wow. And guess what? He was one of the worst wrestlers <laughs> I've ever seen. I also, I remember speaking with, somehow his name came up with Kevin Sullivan. Okay. And Kevin said... Yeah, it was like trying to wrestle against a tree. <laughs> well, he stood at six foot ten. He was trained by Jack Pfeffer, who was a oh. notable heist. He was a notable swindler. Right, a <laughs> used police to, artist. He used to advertise uh, Bruno San Martino. And Hobo Brazil. And Hobo Brazil, that's right. Uh, he got to start in Stampede. He, he trained at the Dungeon in 1954. Well, if he made it through that, he had, he right, had, he had something going. Some chops. Uh, he was in the AWA, feuded with Bob Geigel right at the start of the AWA with, when Vern Gagne started it up. Uh, and it, our fr good friend Bushwhacker Luke might know him because he was a big star in the Australian WCW. Yeah, they would take, you know, big American names. So mm -hmm. even if he might not have been the greatest worker, mm -hmm. uh he was impressive looking and maybe in the 50s and 60s, his work was better. But by the time I saw him, he deteriorated. But I'm sure you <laughs> have some more notes on him. Well, he became a Maple Leaf wrestling mainstay 
And uh, his last big American accomplishment, he feuded with Killer Kowalski in Australia for the WCW champion, the Australian WCW championship. Uh, His last big thing in America, uh, really before the IWA, right before that, was a feud with Dusty Rhodes in Florida. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know if anything survived. I couldn't find any video of that. Well, you don't hear a lot of people talking about Tex McKenzie because except for his height. uh, Oh, yeah. Another thing I remember. They had him on commentary. Really? Sometimes. Wow. And he was equally as big. He wasn't very good. But uh, it's funny how that happens in wrestling. When you get, you know, you've, you've seen the old uh, WWF with Antonino Rocca. Right. On commentary. Yeah. And uh, even Some even, work. even uh, Pat, uh, Pat Patterson. Sure. That was, the, yeah. you know, just a heavy accent. But uh, those are my memories. <laughs> but it's a beautiful card. It is. It's and Tex McKenzie. Yeah. Uh, he survived many years in pro wrestling. It says uh, it, the, the cool thing about these cards are they're in English and in French on the back. And it says uh, giant Texan, well liked in Canada. And he's from Dallas, co-holder of the Canadian Open tag team title, starred in many singles bouts. Terrific power. <laughs> so hopefully you would have terrific power if you're 6'10". <laughs> so very it, cool. Yeah. Thanks for the history lesson. We're going to stop the clock. We have 55 seconds remaining. So four minutes, five seconds on the great Tex McKenzie. Carrie, I, this was a fun one. I didn't know a lot about Tex McKenzie. I didn't know that you were able to see him live. It's pretty cool. Well, or on television. Well, I did see him live. You saw him live. They, okay, they brought, start they, the clock again. They brought the I real quick. They brought the, I, the IWA, the one show, and I dragged my girlfriend at the time, the one that I went to Tennessee on that. Oh my Wobegon goodness! Gone trip. Check out Last Stop Penn Station about the Tennessee and Odyssey. It, it was uh, Mil Moscaris against Ivan Koloff, and Tex McKenzie was on the card at the at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City. Wow. Was he was any good? I mean, he's nope. 20 years old. Okay. <laughs> Trained by Stu Hart, six foot 10. And no good. That's been Tex McKenzie. I want to thank Carrie. I want to thank Uncle Gunny, Captain Lou. And we encourage you for more to check out the previous edition about Vern Gagne, to check out Last Stop Penn Station, and to check out BassanCreative.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Happy wrestling. We'll see you next time. 